Bang. Neves Knives, I'm Jared, and today we're checking out 10 USA made knives. And we are going to get through them very quickly. Starting it off, we have the Schrade Slight. And it is a very affordable USA made knife, like 50, 50 bucks, 50, 60 bucks, something like that. D2 steel. Um, the, the thing with it is though, is it has steel, it's basically steel liners without a scale. So it's like they were supposed to do put scales on this, but there's no scales, so it's just the liners. And it is incredibly too, too thin, it's way too thin. So in the hand, when you're bearing down or trying to cut something, it's not comfortable at all. But to me maybe it's just not for that it's just a lightweight very compact edc it does have really good action very smooth on the caged bearings or on the bearings then it has a deep carry clip that's not reversible but yeah it's just it's so so thin that uh, and then another thing is that when you're bearing down you squeeze a lock bar over if this was a liner lock you wouldn't have to worry about that but since there's no scales on it you're constantly pushing the liner over and you can see how far mine already is so you know it does get stuck or it gets a little bit of lock stick here and there anyways their next one Another USA made knife from Schrade. This is the Schrade Truix, I think it is. Now the Truix, the problem I have with it is that, well, I have a couple, right? So one, I do want to say this is my favorite one that they've done, the, um, the Schrade Truix. It is a USA made, obviously, because it's in this video. It does have really good action. It is on bearings and it is a crossbar lock, which is nice and strong. Ergonomics are really good. It has pretty good quality G10, but all of this is steel, right? Even the deep carry clip is steel. The, the screws are in the way of the deep carry clip. I don't really like that, but that's not even my biggest deal. They, they're going for like 200 bucks. I think some places you can get them for like 150. They did lower the price significantly. It's S35VN in steel in G10. I just don't see the value there. Uh, even at 150, that's tough. Um, you know, closer to 150 is a lot more acceptable than 200, but the geometry is like a pry bar. I mean, it is super thick. Uh, granted, you can be maybe a little bit tougher on it and it is ergonomic and for most people it'd probably be just fine. You know, you can use the secondary tip to open things up. So, you know, it'll still cut, it's still good. Um, but, you know, I just, I, I think the price is just, you know, they started off very bad. Like I think the, the first price was like 250 bucks then they lowered it down to like 200. I think that's what it is on their site right now. But I think at other places you can get it for like 150. So with the $150 price tag, I'm not mad at that too much. You know, I think that, that's okay. Especially being USA made and everything. I just wish that they would, they would take care of the little details because this thing could be an absolute winner. Let me just be clear. If it had a good plunge grind and choil, if it had a good clip without screws in the way of putting it all the way deep carry, if the blade wasn't so short to the handle, the blade to handle ratio, if you just covered those three details, this thing could possibly be a winner. And also, sorry, and also throw a hollow grind on this, you know, to give it better geometry. Anyways, let's get to the next one. Now the next one is the Tecto Knives F3 Charlie. Now this one is only assembled in the USA. So let me be clear, the parts are made overseas. This is the only one I think on the, in this video that's gonna be like that. So it is not 100% USA made, but it is assembled in the USA and it's really good. Now this is a great way to get something, you know, built in the USA for a good value. The sound of it, listen to that sound. This thing's cool. I like it. It's a big knife, great blade shape. The button seems like it's pretty pretty durable, pretty tough. It seems like they've done a decent job with it. Love the fuller. The fuller actually works really good. It is D2 steel again, uh, G10 scales. The clip works great. You know, it, it's it's got a lot going for it. So for just a large pocket knife, because it is a large knife, this is not a small knife at all. Just to give you a little idea, Here's the, the shred, not that you might you might not know the size of this. This is basically about the size of a, a, a bug out, uh, maybe slightly uh, longer. Uh, the deca, Hogue Deca size. Here you go, here's a Hogue Deca. 
There you go. So you can see it's a big knife. It's a big knife, but it's a super uh, decent big knife. You know, obviously it's not going to be the strongest lock in the world being a button lock, but it'll be secure enough to do most EDC tasks. Next is, oh, we're stepping it up a little bit with this one. We got the Medford Samood Criminal S35VN aluminum scales. Now people are going to say, how are you bitching? about the price of this when these things are like 350, 400 bucks. Yeah, but they're more mid-tech, like the hollow grind is done by hand and it's very consistent. It has a lot better geometry. Uh, so the little details are done. And that's what, what I was talking about with the other one. You know, when the little details are missed, you know, you feel you don't like the, the, the price is absurd when you miss the little details on a high priced knife. So at least with this one, the little details are hit. The action is amazing. They tuned the button or the, the detent on this button lock really good. I know the first ones they did were not that way, but over um, time they, you know, they fixed that. So really snappy detent. S35VN, they heat treat all the steels in small batches. So the heat treats are always really, really good. I've been very happy with uh, Medford's heat treatments. Anyways, yeah, very cool. Comes in lots of different colors too, but it is expensive. Next is... The little native Warncliffe S30EV. And I love a little Warncliffe. What's cool about this is you see how you got the handle, like it's like a taper right there. That fits so nicely in the hand for like detailing work, for scoring things. You can absolutely use it like a big knife in a lot of ways, even though it's a little compact knife, because you can get a full grip on it. No, it's not much cutting length, but you know, there's a lot of things you cut during the day that you don't need a lot of cutting length. And because it's so compact, you get a lot, a lot of power into that tip. I mean, you can really score things real deep with that. Compression lock is a nice strong lock mechanism. It is on phosphor bronze washers, yet very smooth as you can see. Well, maybe not that time, but <laughs> it, it drops. It's very smooth. Um, and then it has a deep carry wire clip that is reversible. Uh, the action's really good. The detent's pretty solid. You can get a great reverse flick snap out of it. Uh, the forward finger twirl allows you to get up nice and tight to the edge. Yeah, it's just a super good knife. I definitely recommend this for people that like secondary knives or or maybe their primary knife, they just like a compact knife. This is phenomenal. I don't think you can go wrong with a little native. Next is, you know what, let's stick with a little bit of Spyderco really quick. We got the Yo Jimbo. This not the Yo Jumbo, the Spyderco Yo Jimbo. I love the Yo Jumbo. But I do think that this is a little bit more EDC friendly for most people. I think that this is going to be the perfect size for most people. Now, they do have a mini coming, a micro Jimbo. Um, they already have the XL one, or I already have the XL one, so I'll probably get the mini when it comes out. Um, it is a worn cliff blade with a deep hollow grind. This knife probably has the best geometry of any spider coat as far as the uh, hollow grinds and everything goes. It is super thin, but that tip, man, again, kind of like the little native. You have so much power into that tip. And the way worn clips are designed is that you have the same amount of power throughout the entire edge. If a knife has a belly, like, and I'm talking about specifically, I guess right now for self-defense reasons, but if you were going to slash something, right, if there's belly there, you, you have power all the way to the belly. Once you have the belly, it kind of slides out. Well, with a worn cliff, you have power all the way through to the tip. Um, very compact. It's only a three inch blade, but plenty of blade length for, for even hard use. So S30V, G10 scales, compression lock, stupid, stupid smooth, really good. I've always said this, that I think out of all Spydercos that the Yojimbos have the best detents. Every one I've ever tried, especially the carbon fiber one, has like incredible detent like like the detents are just super snappy and yeah the action overall very smooth very glassy hear that lock click in oh i love the yojimbo you know they were made for self-defense slash edc and i think they do it well next is the protec pt these are available right now in all different colors now you know, that's crazy to say because for a long time, man, these things were so difficult to get. The only way you could get them basically uh, was to go to Blade Show or anything. And right now they are available. I don't know for how long, but as far as me making this video, they're available. 
Um, this is a Magna Cut blade. It's six, between 64 and 65, or sorry, between 63 and 64 HRC, exactly where we want to see Magna Cut. And this thing comes out with a thwack. Listen at This thing hammers out. It almost has recoil. Lots of power. Uh, very strong springs. I think this is probably one of the most powerful uh, small knives I've ever felt as far as the automatic goes. Aluminum handles, solid aluminum handles. It is uh, um, a clamshell uh, uh, package where it's just two pieces pushed together. I like that. Protect does a hell of a job with their button locks. So it's a compact little knife that you can get a full grip on. Fantastic blade shape. It's gonna work great for most things. And yeah, just a super duper solid automatic that's compact. I love the clip, the clip, man, the Protect clips always work really good. And one thing I really like is the, the power of the snap, but then you can still easily close it because it's small. That's an awesome knife right there. Next. The MSI, the, the Microtech MSI. So I do want to say I do like the knife. I, I even like the stitch even more. So I just want to be clear about that. I love the stitch, love the MSI, but I'm a little taken back by the HRC of the steel. I do have an edge retention test actually happening on this exact knife right here, right now as we speak. So that'll be coming very soon. Um, I, I've sharpened it one time. And, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see how the controlled test goes. I don't want to give anything away. But anyways, the action is really good aside from the detent. The detent super light. So it is more of a slow roller. You can flick it though. And you can thumb flick it. And you can also use the switch. And this is a very strong lock. Like it's super solid, rock solid lock up. I do like the overall ergos, love the blade shape, love the size, love the design, love that it's USA made, love the hardware. You know, I love seeing innovative locking mechanisms, um, you know, with the spring and everything. I just wish they were able to figure out a way to make that detent stronger so you can, you know, get some power because it has multi-row ceramic bearings. Multi-row ceramic bearings, but, you know, you wouldn't notice because the this pushes up on and pushes on the tang the whole time. So it kind of slows it down a little bit. But anyways, um, the one thing I also am a little upset about is they said they were going to be 250, right? And in some places they are. But then you see them on sites for like 320 or 300 and something. And when I was at Blade Show Texas, they charged me like $320 a piece, something like that. 315, 320, 325, something like that. And I bought four of them. Well, two of these and two stitches, they were the same price. So I was a little like taken back, like, why is this so much money? I figured like maybe they were just wrong in their estimate of how much they were going to sell them for. But then in Atlanta, they're selling them for 250 or something. I don't know. I have no idea. I, I'm just going to say they're between 250 and 325. That's what I'm going to say. Uh, but edge retention coming soon. I know I keep talking about it. I've done one. I got to do a confirmation one. Next is the Emerson A100. Now, you can get one of these right now on Emerson's site. I don't have an affiliate link. But you should be able to get one. I believe they're available on uh, Emerson's site. Anyways, the A100, a hard use liner lock knife. And it does feel tough. It is a very tough knife. I did get the their titanium um, disc that they sell on their site. So you can get that right on their site. I do also like that you can front flip it pretty easily too. I can even do the side finger, well, normally. Damn it. <laughs> you can do the side finger, but uh, 154 CM blade steel, USA made G10 titanium liners. So they're pretty pricey for considering the steel it is, but you know, 154 CM, man, I like 154 CM. I have no problem with 154 CM and this stuff did sharpen up really good. I do have some micro chipping happening here in the belly, but that could be my fault. So I don't want to put it on the heat treat because it did sharpen up really good. It deburred really good. The, the burr was a little bit funny. No, let me take that back. I'm sorry. I'm starting to remember now. So when I sharpened it up, the burr was, that was my issue. Uh, the burr, so maybe, maybe, I, I believe the heat treat felt good, like on the stone, but when it came time to deburr it, the burr was a little finicky. So usually with 154, that usually means that it's on the softer side. Now I know these are tough knives, so, you know, maybe 
they're just doing it a little bit on the softer side, like 58 instead of 60. That would be my guess. Maybe, even, you know, 57, 58 HRC or something. That's what I'm guessing. I'm not 100%. Um, it, you know, I haven't had to test it or anything. Uh, but um, the geometry is already thick. So I don't know why they would have to do the steel super tough, considering the the steel's already thick you know you can use this thing like a pry bar i mean it, it is a tough knife and but hey that's what it's for so i appreciate that like that's like i understand there's knives i want to have maximum edge retention and cutting performance it's not this this is a knife that you're supposed to be able to take out in the field and survive with something you're supposed to be able to take into combat something that can do hard tasks you know not necessarily slicing performance tasks but something that can be you can be super tough on almost like a multi-tool really quick i just want to say one more thing about this because i know there's a lot of people man that uh, that really get down on uh emerson's both good and bad and i do understand the bad part you know they're rough around the edge they absolutely are and they are absolutely overpriced 100%. So I'm not denying that. I agree with that. Um, I'm just happy that these types of knives do still exist, even if it is a little bit pricier that, you know, because it's not trying to be pretty, you know, and I grew up on a construction site my whole life just beating the living tar out of my tools. So I can respect a knife that's trying to be that. It's not trying to be pretty. It, it is rough around the edge. You know, I'm rough around the edges. So I, I kind of respect it in a way, but of course, yeah, it, you know, it's overpriced for what it is. And, and you know, it, it, you're, you're getting a lot better tolerances and fit and finish from other companies for sure. And then last, you know what? We, we showed the Hodeca. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna go to something else, but the Hodeca, we already know how awesome the Hodeca is. I'll briefly talk about it. Magna Cut Steel, they did up their HRC to 63 to 64. Uh, this is original goat aluminum scales. I highly recommend anybody get the original goat scales. I can't recommend them enough, whether it's for your Spider Co's or your, your Hodeca's. And I recommend it on the Hodeca all the time because I do think that this is a knife that kind of requires new scales if you have the FRN. If it's the FRN, if it's a G10, you're probably fine, but the FRN, get some original goat scales. They're made in the USA, they're really good. This is such a lightweight, useful EDC knife. It's one of my favorite USA made lightweight knives. If not my favorite, to be honest. But last, but not least, the Spyderco Manix XL. One of my all time favorite USA made knives and that still stands. It is absolutely, one of my all time favorite knives, period. Um, whether it's the XL or the regular one, it doesn't matter. I would love to see them do some of these locks on other knives, you know, other styles of knives. I think that that would be just absolutely amazing. I don't know why they haven't done it. Their steel, their heat treats are always so good. Even this stuff, you know, some of the best S30V I've ever tried. Benjamin does a good job with their S30V too. I just want to be clear, but Spider Coast, man, I'm always happy with it. I'm always impressed with it. Um, and you have so much cutting length and cutting power in this blade because it's so big. So you can use this as a hard juice knife or a slicer, like because of the broad blade, you know, even though it's only 20 thousandths behind the edge, but man, it slices like a champ because you have so much uh, drop from the spine thickness to the edge. So, uh, the lock is nice and strong, very durable, super, uh, fidgety too. And that's another thing I love about it. Ergonomics are really good. People, uh, asked me about the, the ring right there. It, it just locks you in because this is big, a big enough distance. So you're pretty much just locked and it doesn't bother you at all. But if you ever wanted to, you could probably just knock that off. You know, I've thought about, um, knocking off this one right here you know, and just making it smooth, but it also locks you in, you know, so I don't know. I, I love the way it is, but I wouldn't mind having some skinny scales or something, you know, where these humps are taken out. But regardless, it's still one of the best USA made knives ever designed and it still stands. So there you guys go. Until next time. Peace.